thanks to future Vegeta's help, tragedy was avoided with the androids. Plus, the group grew a lot stronger too. It seems like Goku's on the cusp of unlocking something new though. What'll it take for him to get it? We'll be covering all that and more in the seventh part of What If Goku Went Super Saiyan Early. About a year passes since future Vegeta left. By now, Kami has told everyone about Cell, but Cell's been moving even more slowly because now he knows everyone's on his tail. Until he can actually find the androids, he needs to be a little bit more covert to say the least, and he's already pretty covert about it anyways. So occasionally here and there he will absorb people, but it's not going to be a bunch of people at once, not entire cities like before. Slowly he's growing, but not enough. But eventually he does it. He's able to finally locate the androids. 17 and 18 are actually still alive. He was about to get desperate and just attack as is. But this way, he could achieve perfection. Although there's an issue. He only finds one at a time. Android 17 is nowhere to be seen, and he finds Android 18 so he goes to absorb her. Thankfully for him, she has no knowledge of him, so absorbing her is pretty quick. And with this, he achieves his semi-perfect form. He could already feel way more power coursing through him. And maybe even just like this, he'll be able to fight the others. Remember, this version of Cell is stronger, because first of all, he was around for a year longer, and also the data he used to develop is way different. It isn't a significant amount, but still, noteworthy enough. And when he transforms, this creates a huge burst of power. Everyone can sense him immediately, and since they've all been trying to find him, they immediately go over to where he is. He does attempt to hide and suppress his power, but by the time he does this, it's already too late. Goku's already arrived, the fastest of the group. Others show up not too long after, but Cell's pretty confident in himself. He did want to achieve his perfect form first, but if he has to fight now, then so be it. With his semi-perfect form, this should be enough. He'll achieve perfection later on. And what better person to fight than Goku himself, the strongest one here, the person he was meant to destroy? Goku powers up into Super Saiyan 2. It all makes sense now. So this is Cell, that one thing they found in Jiro's lab. They're not sure how he's here because they destroyed him, but they assume it has something to do with time travel. But they put all the pieces together and realize he's a pretty big threat. Cell at first feels pretty good about this. Goku died pretty early on in his timeline, but still, he has data of Super Saiyan 2 because Goku unlocked it by then, although he barely used it. But still, this is nothing too crazy for him. Even as is, he feels like he could fight Super Saiyan 2 Goku. But Goku's way stronger than he realizes. Goku completely outpaces him. He's grown so much in the past year, and even before that too, thanks to Vegeta giving them a heads up. And the craziest thing is, he's holding back right now. Bulma ended up studying some of the data she found from Jiro, so even though Cell wasn't an immediate threat, they did know about him, and they know that he has DNA from everybody, including Piccolo. Goku does remember Bulma mentioning the fact that he could probably regenerate too. Maybe Cell would have won here if they didn't have all the prep time and knowledge about him. Actually, it's barely prep time because they didn't realize he was going to come here. But even so, Goku knows to destroy every bit of him. It's a shame because it sounded like he would be a pretty interesting fighter, but he knows he can't risk this. Quickly, he charges a Kamehameha. Cell's terrified at Goku's showcase of power, especially because, amidst the blast, Goku suddenly powers up into something else. It's very quick, and he barely gets a glimpse of it, because the second Goku powers up to this, Cell's eradicated. With the Dragon Balls, they wish back everyone that Cell killed. They wanted to wait so they didn't have to make multiple wishes, and now that he's actually gone, they could do this. But the rest of the group is just pretty shocked at Goku's showcase of power. Obviously, Goku's always training, and he has grown stronger since. But what he showcased against Cell, they've never seen before, especially the other Saiyans. They're still trying to achieve Super Saiyan 2 and the mastery of it that Goku had. And he's already gone far beyond it. He got something else. Oh, that. Yeah, Goku says that he recently found out about this. It's pretty new to him, and he can't really use it for too long, so he only briefly powers up into it when he really needs to. He might have not actually needed it there against Cell, but it was at least a good chance for him to finally use it. He just calls it Super Saiyan 3 for now. Everyone else is so far behind Goku, and he's still going way beyond them. Every time it seems like they're closing the gap, it just gets even bigger. And now we enter the six-year time skip because a year's already passed. Gohan sort of trains a bit, but it doesn't really stick. Unlike the main story, there's been a lot that's happened so far that's kind of turned him away from that. Goku does get to see a little bit of his potential, but he's had such a different upbringing by now. And when Goten's eventually born, the same happens with him. Gohan at least knows the basics of martial arts, and he has grown a bit stronger, but Raditz thinks it's a waste of potential, though. Goku's glad that he's happy, but Raditz tries to convince him to train Gohan more. There's not really much he could do, though. Gohan doesn't even have Super Saiyan yet. But he's improved a ton from before, even with his little training. He at least can actually fight now if he wants. I feel like there's still a good chance he could become the Great Saiyan. I know a lot of people theorize that he only did this because of the Ginyu Force, but I think it's much more likely that Gohan's just a nerd. Like, look at Dr. Hedo and the Gammas. They're just like that. They didn't need to get beat up by a group of aliens who pose on them every time they won. They just like doing that. Nappa and Raditz focus a lot on training together. All three of the Saiyans are behind Goku right now, but specifically these two, they want to work on getting at least ahead of Vegeta. For the time being, they're bachelors. Vegeta at least has Bulma, and if he didn't, he probably would be one too. And for Trunks, unlike Gohan, he's actually still training because Vegeta makes him train. At some point, this might eventually influence Goten, but it's a slower process. And as another side note, Krillin would probably eventually meet Android 18. He did see her before in Jiro's lab and was one of the people that tried to convince everyone to not kill her. And especially after she died to Cell, one thing would probably lead to another. That brings us to the tournament at the end of the time skip. 
three people enter this time that didn't enter before, Ten Shinhan, Raditz, and Nappa. The rest of the roster looks pretty normal, except for the fact that their powers are all respectively really different, notably Goku and Krillin being way stronger than they normally were, and Gohan being way weaker. And because of this, Bobbidi's actually focused on Goku to take energy from. Spobovich and Yamu wait for him to go up. His match is against Kibito. It was supposed to be against Vegeta, but Shin changed some things, mainly to get this plan to work. Kibito coaxes Goku into powering up, and he does. Not showing Super Saiyan 3, but at least Super Saiyan 2. Spobovich and Yamu take the opportunity to jump in, with Shin and Kibito trying to paralyze Goku as well. But this doesn't really work the way they intended. Spobovich and Yamu are able to get some energy, but Goku's able to break free of it pretty quickly. He wasn't showing his full power. With a burst of energy and a brilliant flash of light, he powers up into Super Saiyan 3. Terrified, Spobovich and Yamu run away, and this breaks him free from the paralysis too. Spobovich and Yamu look and they at least got a good amount of energy from it. They didn't get all the energy they needed for Boo, but still, this is more than enough. Bobbidi only needs a little bit more now. The second they leave Shin and Kibito try and follow, telling the others to follow too. They have something important to tell them and they'll explain on the way. Goku decides to go along because the person he was fighting leaves. Piccolo instantly goes along too, realizing who these two people are. Mainly because Kami's watching from above and told Piccolo. Vegeta, Raditz, and Nappa follow too, with Krillin and Ten reluctantly going as well. They want to see what's going on. As they chase Spobovich and Yamu, Shin and Kibito explain everything. They didn't expect Goku to have that much power though, which could be kind of an issue because they might have gotten enough for Boo. They're not too sure yet, but still. If Boo ends up being revived, well, Goku's sure he could defeat him at least. It'll be nice to have a challenge for once in a while. Shin tells him not to underestimate Boo. He's incredibly powerful, and even with as strong as Goku is, he's not too sure if Goku can beat him. And yeah, that is true. Goku has no clue of who Boo is and how strong he is. But after all his time practicing with Super Saiyan 3, this should be more than enough. There hasn't been anyone that could stand up against it so far. He assures the two Kais that he's not being cocky either. Confident, yes, but not cocky. They arrive at Babidi's ship and watch him kill Spokovich and Yamu. Deborah then tries to attack them, but he's really quickly stopped. He almost attacks Kibito, but quickly Nappa powers up into Super Saiyan 2, grabbing onto Deborah and holding him still, locking him in place. Deborah is barely able to turn around, spitting on Nappa and turning him into stone. But the second he does this, Raditz then powers up into Super Saiyan 2, fighting Deborah pretty easily. Of course he's concerned about Nappa, but Shin then says all he needs to do is kill Deborah. Sounds easy enough. Raditz fights him pretty evenly at first, trying to make Deborah feel comfortable here. Really, he's not using his full power just yet. And then he gets the moment to strike. Quickly, he showcases his full strength, landing a powerful blow on Deborah that doesn't kill him, but seriously injures him. He then launches up into the air, killing him with a double sunder. Nappa's pretty pissed off because that guy fought like a coward. He definitely would have won that fight if he didn't turn into stone. But thankfully, they prevented anyone from dying against him. Shin hopes that Raditz didn't give off too much energy, but that fight was really quick, and he was the only one fighting, so it shouldn't have been too bad. Bobbidi was able to get back to the ship, and he did get some energy from this, but most notably, he got a lot of it from Goku. Even though he wasn't at full power, and they only barely were able to take energy from him, they got about 80% of the energy they needed, plus another 5% from Deborah's fight. But now things are looking bad. He's close to reviving Boo, but they're going through his ship now. Soon enough, they're going to get to him. He needs a way to get energy quickly. Otherwise, his plan is doomed. But he has the perfect idea. When the group's about to get to the bottom of the ship, Nappa then feels a strange sensation. Then Raditz, then Vegeta. Bobbidi is trying to possess all of them. They're vulnerable targets. And he can tell they're not fulfilled. They have latent evil within them, but more importantly, their insecurities. He could exploit this. He could make them his minions. Shin and Kibito are a bit terrified, with Goku, Piccolo, Krillin, and Ten Shinhan ready to fight. They can't believe what they're seeing, but it seems like the three of them are actually being possessed by Bobbidi. But how? They should be strong enough to counter this. Bobbidi's spell ends, and the three Saiyans all power up, now with an M on their hands. Majin Raditz, Majin Nappa, and Majin Vegeta look at Goku. They're now under Bobbidi's control, seemingly at least, and they got a huge boost in power from them. Everyone is then teleported back to the World Tournament. It takes Goku a bit to realize what happened, but he comes to realize that they willingly did this. The three of them gave in to Bobbidi for that power boost. They wanted to see if it was enough to actually beat Kakarot. Plus, part of them wanted to go back to their old life. They've been domesticated by Earth. Raditz and Vegeta especially felt this way. Vegeta with his own family now, and Raditz seeing what Kakarot's life is like. Look at him, pure-hearted, raising two powerful Saiyan sons who don't even fight. Plus, all three of them wanted to surpass Goku. This way, they could do that. Shin's worried because now Bobbidi's definitely going to get enough energy. But Goku says not to worry. He powers up into Super Saiyan 2, ready to fight the three of them all. With Piccolo, Krillin, and Ten joining in as well. As the fight breaks out, at Bobbidi's ship, he sees the power slowly increase. And then, Boo's finally revived. Even after this short amount of time, it gave more than enough energy. He doesn't even need those minis anymore. They got the job done. He's done it. He's resurrected Majin Buu. Goku's able to move everyone away from the tournament. It's a 4v3 right now. The three Majin Saiyans versus Goku, Piccolo, Tenshinhan, and Krillin. But Goku then asks the three others, leave this to him. 
These three clearly have a gripe with Goku, and that's the only way they're going to solve it. And he does appreciate their help, especially with how strong they are now. But it feels a little unfair to him. Krillin tells him this isn't the time to be worried about that, but Goku says just to trust him. If he wins like this, they're never going to be satisfied. He needs to fight them alone. They could go and stop Bobbity. So, Goku begins a 1v3, and he finally does what they want, showing his full power, Super Saiyan 3. And even with their boost in strength, on top of the fact that it's a 3v1, they're not sure they could win this. Of course, Super Saiyan 3 still has downsides, but thanks to all of Goku's training with it, he has at least gotten somewhat of a control on it. It's not perfect, Super Saiyan 2 has way better efficiency, but in terms of raw power, this is his strongest, this is his peak right now. As that battle rages on, Piccolo's crew goes to find Bobbity again, but it's already too late because Bobbity's coming to them, and they sense a terrifying power alongside him. Shin and Kibito's jaws drop, Majin Buu's here. The four Saiyans even stop their battle and look up. Vegeta's mad because he doesn't want the fight to be interrupted. Quickly he launches a blast up, and Bobbity doesn't even notice. It hits him and kills him instantly, with part of it also scraping Buu, but he instantly regenerates. He lands on the ground with a grand entrance, but Nappa then shouts at Boo, with his scream shaking the entire area, being felt even far away at the World Tournament. The three Saiyans are fuming right now, especially now that their battle is being interrupted, and together all three of them attack Boo, with Goku even joining in too. Weirdly enough, they put their battle aside for the moment just to fight Boo. And, especially with Goku there, this actually isn't a tough battle. Three boosted Super Saiyan 2s, plus Goku and Super Saiyan 3, way beyond where he is supposed to be at this point. Just like Goku said before, Majin Buu is not actually a challenge. And, quickly, they kill him, like it's nothing. And then they immediately return back to their fight, like nothing happened at all. Shin and Kibito can't believe what they're witnessing. I mean, it's kind of a good thing, but still. They're really that focused on their fight. But slowly the battle dies down. Goku loses some more stamina to Super Saiyan 3, but the other three Saiyans knew from the very beginning that Goku was going to be able to win here. One by one they begin to fall. First Nappa, then Raditz, and then finally Vegeta. But before Vegeta loses consciousness, he exchanges some words with Goku. Just as he expected, Goku won again. He wanted to see if it was possible to win, and even with that power boost that they got, it still wasn't enough. The three of them wanted to go back to who they were, at least briefly. They hoped they would gain some sort of power that way, plus the other power that Bobbity promised them. To think they did all that, and it led them nowhere. But Goku acknowledges their strength. They didn't need to do that. And look, that freak Majin Buu was revived, and they were actually able to defeat him, even if they're not the strongest. Still, look at how much they've grown, not just as warriors, but people too. They've grown way stronger than they realized. The old Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz wouldn't even recognize this as wrong. And thankfully Goku stopped them before they hurt anyone. Mainly at the tournament. Still though, Vegeta can't believe what he witnessed. Kakarot truly is number one. Goku stands there, a bit beat up, but victorious over the three Saiyans. As well as Majin Buu. Shin and Kibito thank everyone for their help. They also heal the other Saiyans and they return to normal. They awkwardly apologize for what they did, but thankfully they did no damage at all. Although, who knows what would have happened if Goku wasn't there. And, even though they led to Majin Buu being revived, still, that didn't cause anything. Shin and Kibito are still speechless at the fact that Buu died so quickly. And the four of them together was overkill. From what they saw, Goku alone would have actually been enough, just like he said. That power they showcased was helpful, but still, terrifying. Those mortals are really weird. But it's a good thing everything worked out in the end, especially after Shin and Kibito's plan failed. They wonder if they'll see more of those three Saiyans. And with that, we leave off here for now. What'd you guys think about this part? And what's gonna happen next time? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel, and it shows me you want to see more videos like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.